Hi interns, this is Paula Carr with our Money Monday lesson today. We are going to be kind of playing a little pretend today uh, to practice some of our budgeting skills and um, different ways we can learn how if we are saving up for something, whether we're planning to live independently or even something like we're doing today, like take a vacation. Um, we're going to talk about how you would budget money for that and how you would calculate your expenses and your expenses being how much money you would spend on each item. So a little bit of a fun um, budgeting exercise today for our Money Mondays. I'm going to walk through it with you guys. Of course, we are right here on uh, 427, April 27th, budgeting a family vacation budget. And who doesn't need a vacation right now? Only if we just even pretend, right? I think that's something that we all would look for and wish we could do right now. So we're just going to play a little bit of fantasy today with pretending we're all going to take our dream vacation and um, budget some money out to see how much that would actually cost us to do that. So right here under 427, make sure you're looking at your pacing guide to see where we are every day to make sure you're staying um, on track with all the lessons for April. And our activity today looks like this already on my clipboard, family vacation budget. So this is going to be pretty fun. I'm going to lead you guys through it and um, we'll go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to read the directions here, here up at the top. So make sure today you have your family vacation budget packet, has several pages stapled together um, through it that we're going to go through, ending with the last page, which is a total of all your expenses and this is kind of what a, a budget would look like with all those expenses listed there so you can calculate that so speaking of calculate you guessed it we're also going to need a calculator so make sure you have either a phone that you can use your calculator on or you have just a regular calculator at your house okay so once you have a pen your family budget packet and a calculator we will go ahead and get started. So pause if you need to, to grab all those items. But I'm going to go ahead and get started here again by reading those directions here at the top of this page. So we are going to pretend today that we are going on a vacation. Whew, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, the only catch is you have to plan all the parts of it. So you're actually planning the entire vacation. Choose where you want to go is the first thing we're going to do. And how you will get there. Um, to get started. From that point, you will choose what you want to do each day. Uh, be sure to fill in all your charts and complete the math properly. So again, a little bit of math today, so don't be afraid, just use that calculator. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. You're gonna have to also make some choices today, which is always good. A little uh, decision making is always healthy as well when it comes to these types of things. So here we go. We have our first page. We have three destinations here as our options. We have the beach for all you beach lovers. We have a city, maybe it's New York City or Chicago or maybe even a city in another country, but just a city, any city that you think you would like to visit. Or the mountains. I know we have some people who just love going to the mountains, enjoying that fresh air in the mountains. So first you have to pick one, only one. We can't go to all of them, unfortunately. But just pick one, pick either beach, city, or mountains, and you can circle that. Remember, I'm going to be completing this on what I would like to do for my dream vacation. So please don't copy my answers. I want your own answers. You choose uh, which of these you like best, okay? So your perfect vacation isn't the same as Paula's perfect vacation. So keep that in mind as we go through here. So... Once we choose which destination we'll be going to out of these three, then we have to figure, well, how do I want to um, get there? Do I want to drive uh, to the beach? Do I want to fly to the beach? It doesn't have to be our beach. It can be a beach, you know, in Florida or somewhere else. Um, and then you have the cost there. Obviously, on all of these, we can tell that driving $500, flying's $1,000. So, which is cheaper? The driving is cheaper because you're only paying for gas there. So same thing here, driving to a city, it'd be $250, but flying would be $750. And then the mountains, driving would be $200, and then flying would be 
650. So you can see those costs there as well on this chart. So what you're going to do is down at the bottom, you're going to write your location. And you're going to write either beach, city, or mountains, whichever you choose to go to today. So take a few minutes, think about it. Do you want to go to the city? Do you want to go to the beach? Do you want to go to the mountains? Just which, whichever speaks to you right now. For me, I think I would like to go, hmm, I think I'd like to go to the mountains. So I'm going to write mountains right here in location. And then I have to make another decision. I have to decide, do I want to drive or do I want to fly to the mountains? Hmm. Man, I really, really sometimes get car sick. I don't really love being in cars, although my husband, he likes to drive. I really like flying more. So you know what? I'm going to choose mountains, and I am going to fly. And you have to look over here to see uh, what that cost is. So you just write here, drive or fly. I think I'm going to fly to the mountains. And that cost for me will be $650. So you write the cost of whatever you chose here with the, destina with the destination location, and then with either if you chose to fly or drive, drive, look at where the arrow is pointing and write that cost in there. So again, I chose the mountains, and I chose to fly, and then I know that that's $650. So really just follow the arrows on that to get that cost. All right, so here we go. Made some decisions on where we're going, got our expenses on how we're going to get there. We're done, right? That's all we have to do is just get there. Mm -mm. There's a lot of other things we have to plan for. Just like in our daily lives, we have to plan for spending money on different bills and different um, foods we eat, different snacks we purchase when we purchase snacks at the hotel, whether we brought our lunch or whether we purchased a lunch. So we're making these decisions and seeing these costs. So the next thing we're gonna talk about when we're planning our dream family vacation is we're thinking about lodging. We have to stay somewhere, right? So there's a few options here uh, you could camp in a tent. I don't know if any of you guys are fans of uh, sleeping in tents. I know we've got maybe a couple, um, but if that's your style, wow, that's only $10 a night. Remember, it's per night is usually how hotels and um, places where you camp, campgrounds, and different places they charge you per night. So it's just not $10 altogether. So tents are 10, so it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, rentals, if you like rented a house, like um, I know we have here like on Folly and Isla Palms and different places in Charleston where you can rent houses. Well, those are a little bit more. Those are $100 per night about. This is just, again, uh, an example. You could sleep it at a hotel for $175. So if you chose to stay in the city, maybe you want to stay in a nice hotel where you get a free breakfast um, and those things. And that's a little bit more. That's $175. And then you could also stay in a resort type condo. And those resorts are a little nicer because they have um, different things for you. They have, the, of course, the pool that perhaps a hotel would have. But again, they have food and they do different activities for the people staying there. They might have like a bingo night um, and just different, different activities. So those are a little bit more in those resort condos. So that's $325 a night. Posh. Very, very nice. Okay. So which type are you going to stay in? So first here under type, right? Either you chose tents, rentals, hotel, or a resort condo. So as much as I'm cooped in these days in my house, you know what, I'm gonna go with tent. I love to camp, actually. So in my type, I'm going to write tents. Remember, write your own answer. Don't say, don't go camping just because I'm going camping. That might not be your thing. You might want to stay in a hotel or a resort or condo. So you make sure you write that here in the type, which you chose here. 
And then it's going to ask you the cost per night, which you can see right here is listed. Cost per night. So I can see tents cost per night is $10. So I'm going to write $10. And our third one's already filled in for us. So we're just, this, the activity saying, well, you're going on a vacation for a week. You're going for seven days. So they already put time seven in here, which is going to help us with how we calculate that with our um, calculators. So what you do is you take the number you wrote in here, cost per night, whether it's $10, $100, $175, $75. Ah, sorry. Like I said, I don't think I'm ever going to get used to the whole opposite camera thing. Okay. So here we go. So we have the number. So you either have 10 or 100, 175 or 325 right here under cost. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that number. You're going to hit that multiply button just like it does times 7. And then you're going to get your answer of total cost. So you can watch me real quick. I have my calculator on my phone today. So I'm going to type in that 10, $10 a night. So whether you had 100, 175, 325, put that number in first. Then you hit the multiplication button. You can see mine right here. So 10 times, and then we're saying seven nights. So you have to times by seven. And you get your equal to seventy dollars. So lo excuse me, lodging will cost me, and I'm gonna write seventy seventy dollars. Now, for example, if you did the hotel, how much is the hotel? Well, the hotel is one seventy five. So you type in one seventy five times. Seven, you get $1,225, obviously more expensive. So just to give you an example of how to do that. So go ahead and pause if you need more time to think about your decision here on where you want to go for your dream vacation. Write the type, how much it is per night, and then multiply that number by seven to get your total cost here. And then we're going to move into activities. Yes, when we go on vacations, we have, we want to do different activities, right? We just don't stay in the hotel the whole time. So we want to do different activities, and we have some options here. Amusement park. So if you're a big roller coaster fan, you love riding roller coasters. Even if you don't love riding roller coasters, and you just like going to amusement park to play the games, maybe there's a water park, those types of things, if you really, really like that, um, that's $225. A day those are pretty expensive especially when you're thinking about food and your ticket and everything so that's $225 what if you wanted to do some water sports paddle boarding um, swimming going out on a jet ski here you really like the water and you want to do some of that stuff that's going to be $125 and some some places you can even go have like a swimming with dolphins or something like that. So just think anything in the water, anything fun water sports you're just really into. Some of us like the other. We like skiing. I don't know. I love skiing. I talk about that all the time. I go once a year. Uh, that's $100. That might not be your thing if you've never gone skiing or maybe if you just like to. And then shopping. Is that something you're going to want to do? You want to go shopping at different stores um, to buy different clothes or uh, souvenirs from where you were. Souvenirs being like hats and t-shirts of where you went. So maybe you did some shopping. So you'd have to add that $60 in there too. So think about what you want to do here. If you want to do any of them, hopefully you do. Uh, at least, I would say at least get two, uh, maybe three. I don't know if it'd be, you could do all of them. That would be pretty expensive. So think about that. So what you're going to do here, they give you a space to write all of them if that's what you choose. Um, but I'm only going to pick two because I'm trying to, you know, I have a light budget. I don't want to spend a lot of money here. But I am saving money on my tent, um, my tent lodging. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll splurge a little bit and go to the amusement park. I love roller coasters. I love amusement parks. Um, even dressing up for the old-timey photos. 
uh, just all, all that fun stuff. You can do it like Carowinds and Six Flags. Um, I really love that stuff. So I'm going to put the amusement park in mine. And um, I know that that's 225 to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and write that while you write yours and think about which one you, which activities you want to do on our dream vacations here. Okay, so I wrote um, Blair Amusement Park, and my cost per day is 225. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and stop there. Just go ahead and pick the ones that you want and just write the type and cost per day, and then we'll go through this together. Okay, the other thing I would like to do I do like water sports, again, but I'm trying to save some money and not just mm, do everything. I definitely know I want to go shopping, though. So I'm going to put shopping in there. I always go shopping uh, wherever I go to a new place to either get souvenirs for my friends and bring back for them um, and different things. So I'm definitely going to go shopping, maybe buy some clothes, too. I'm trying to get this where I don't have a glare on here. Yeah, okay. So I wrote shopping, $60. And you know what? Oh, I really want to do one of these skiing or water sports. Hmm. Well, it's kind of summertime. Uh, so you know what? I went skiing this year. I want to do some water sports. So I am. I, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to splurge a little bit since I saved some money with um, my lodging. So I'm going to also do some water sports. I like to stay busy when I'm on my vacations. And that is $125. Okay, make sure you're writing your own. If we tend to have the same stuff, that's okay. We're just similar in what we the things we like to do. But just make sure you're just not straight copying everything I'm writing. That's boring. Make your own decisions. Make your own decisions. Okay, so once you've listed all the things you want to do for activities here in the type, and you put that cost per day, which is what those are listed, cost per day, um, you're gonna decide how many days are you gonna do this? You know, you're staying for seven days um, at your location, on your vacation. So think about like how many days do you wanna spend at the amusement park? How many days do you wanna spend shopping or doing water sports? So I think the amusement park, you know, I'm pretty much a one-time deal one day at the amusement park, as long as there wasn't too long a lines. Um, I'm pretty good with just one day. So I'm just gonna have one day at the amusement park. Hey, if you're a roller coaster, you know, addict and you love that, then maybe you wanna spend two. Again, look at that price though. It's the most expensive out of all of those activities. So the more you do the amusement park, again, the more expensive that vacation is gonna become. Shopping, shopping's only $60. I find that when I do go on vacations, I go shopping a lot, uh, you know, go out to eat and stuff like that. So, you know, I might go shopping for, hmm, let's say, I'm going to go at least three days, just three days of shopping. I'm sure my husband will be thrilled with that. And then water sports. I'm pretty good for about one day for water sports as well. So I'm going to put a one on water sports. So that's about four days, and then that'll just give me a, other time to just hang out at my campsite since I'm, uh, you know, in my tent. Maybe if you chose the resort condo, maybe that'll give you a little extra days to do stuff around the resort or condo. Just some chill days. Remember, it's a vacation. You don't want to, you know, like overwhelm yourself and do something every day to you know, give yourself some, give yourself a little break. It is a vacation. So. Just decide how many days. How many days do you want to go to a, a, an amusement park? How many days do you want to go shopping? How many days do you want to do water sports? Or even how many days do you want to go skiing? It's a heavy physical activity. I think one day would be a, a good, good enough day for me to go skiing. So once you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your cost per day, just like we did up here with our lodging, and you're going to multiply that by how many days you're doing that. So if it's helpful, Go ahead and write a little multiplication sign. Right in front of these so that you know you're taking 225 times one or whatever cost you put in this, um, in this box. 
okay? So right here I have 225 times one, well I know anything times one is itself. So my total cost for that is going to be $225. Oh, I'm going to have to do some math here, though. I don't know that off the top of my head. Ugh. Uh, 60 times 3. Let me get out my calculator. So 60 times 3 here. So 60. Use that times button. Times 3. Whoop. 180. All right. $180 for shopping. That's reasonable. Okay, so again, I, how I got the 60 was I took 60, multiplied it by 3 to get 180. And now we come down here to our water sports that I chose to do. It was $125. I'm going to multiply it by 1. I'm only going to do it one day. So, put $125 for that. Anything times 1 is itself. All right, so again, your answers are not my answers. You know what, if some of you guys put tents on there, I'm like, ah, come on, I know you. You don't like to go camping. You're more of a resort type person. Put what you want here. This is your vacation that you're kind of dreaming about here. So now that we have um, a couple costs here with activities, we really need to add them up, add them together. So again, we're gonna use our calculators for that. So once you have a total cost, listed right here for all your activities, you're going to add them up to get a total. So I'm going to put a big old addition button right here. See? We're going to take these and we're going to add them. Add all of these numbers up. So I have to add 225 plus 180 plus 125. So go ahead, take this time to add up your own cost for your activities. You might want to do it twice, just to, I always like doing it twice, just to make sure I did that right. I did, yay, love to double check myself. All right. So I added all of these, the 225, the 180, and the 125, and I got $530. Those activities are going to be expensive, but that's okay. That lets me know what I need to save, how much money I need to save for, for this vacation now. So we're not done yet. We have our location. We have whether we're flying or whether we're driving. We have our lodging, how what we're staying in, a rental, a tent, a hotel, and we chose our activities. We're going to move on to the next page now because when you're on vacations, there's that's why vacations are a little expensive because people always don't go on vacations all the time. Something special that families do. Um, now we have to decide when you're at a location. Typically, you have to use a rental car. So especially since I flew, I have to use a rental car. Now, for those of you who chose to drive, you don't have to do this. And that's a little confusing. That was the only thing about this activity. I was like, mm. if you chose to dr drive, so on the first page, on the first page, if you chose to drive right here, if you chose this icon, you followed these arrows up, then you don't have to do anything here. You know, you can put, you can put a big, zero here right in total cost because you already have your car you drove your car you don't need to rent a car okay so you can put zero if you chose to drive your car so you even save some more money Ooh, i chose to fly so i i chose an expensive route here mm. all right so i need to decide what kind of car when you go to rent a car uh, you have to be 25 to rent a car uh so right now probably a parent would be doing that or a guardian so you, uh, what you do is when you go to rent a car, when you're of age, you choose what kind of car you want. They'll ask you a small car. You know, do you not have very many people with you? Not very much luggage. Do you want a midsize, which is like, you know, just a regular sedan car? 
a sports car because you're looking fancy and you want to have fun, maybe a Corvette or um, that has, not, you know, the, not a Corvette, but one of the, was it the top comes down? That would be so much fun. Or maybe a van and SUV because you have your whole family. Oh my goodness, you even brought your pets with you. You guys have everybody in there. So think about which one do you need to rent for your family if you flew only, this is only if you chose to fly. So me, it's just me and my husband, but you know what, I do pack a lot of luggage, so I probably need a midsize. So I'm gonna write midsize in my type. So you just have to write the type. And then the cost per day. So the cost per day on a midsize is $70 per day. That's how, um, when you rent a car, that's how they charge you as well for those items. And then it already has our calculation here. So what I need to do, since we know we're staying seven days for our vacation, we need to multiply 70 times seven, or whatever, was it 35 or 150 or 70, whatever you chose in your cost per day, you need to multiply that by seven. So get those calculators back out. They're so handy dandy. Check that again. I always like to check it again. I, I always like to double check myself. Okay. So my cost, because I rented a car, is going to be $490 per day. Yikes. Man, maybe I should have drove. Hmm. Those of you who, who chose to drove were really thinking there. That was really smart. But... If you didn't choose, if you chose to fly, then you have to write your total cost here. If you chose to drive, you can just put a big old fat zero, big old donut. But we're not done yet, that's not it. You have to eat, right? We always talk about food costs and how much food you know, really does cost us, and it does add up after a while. So what type of family meals, um, what type of meals are you gonna get uh, while you're on this vacation, do you think? You'll most likely make your own, bring your own food and make your own, cook it however you need to cook it. Sometimes hotels have little kitchens in them, um, little stoves where you can make stuff. I know tent sites have a grill. Um, I've done that before a lot. So you can make your own food. Um, you can fast food for a couple days or you can just do a large family meal. So you don't have to do these every single night. So. Picnic, how many days do you think you can cook on your own? Go to the grocery store and cook your own food. How many days do you think, you know, you and your family can do that? Um, how many days do you think you're just going to, you know, not do too much work and just get fast food? And then what about a large family meal? Um, do you think you guys are going to cook a large family meal or have that? So with my husband and I, we do like to cook. So if it's seven days, you know, I think for at least four of those days, I could do that. So I'm going to write picnic. Definitely going to try to cook my own food. But you know what? Sometimes we like to play it easy and get fast food. So I'm going to write that one too. I'm not going to choose a large family meal because we don't have a large family. It's only me and one other person. But if you do have a large family, you might think about that large family meal plan there. But I just wrote only two types here. Picnic and fast food. Now remember, we're staying on this vacation seven days. So you have to put at least something that equals seven days um, once we get there. So picnic, I can see picnic is $15. So I'm going to write that right here, $15 for picnic. And then fast food is 35 So I'm going to write 35 here. So this is the kind of the hard part. We know that we're staying on our vacation a total of seven days, right? Do we have to eat every day? Yes, we do. We're humans. We need that fuel for our bodies. So you do need to eat every day. So you need to think about how many days can you go cooking for yourself? How many days can you go eating fast food? Or how many days do you need that large family meal? So maybe you're just like, fast food, seven days, cool. 
that's fine. You can just write your fast food and put seven days. I'm going to split mine up a little bit to show you how you could save money by cooking your own food like a picnic style. So again, I think, you know, I'm camping out. I have my grill. We'll go to the grocery store that's around. And um, we're going to just cook at, at, you know, our campsite since I chose the tent. And we're going to cook uh, at least four days. I'm gonna write four on mine. But you know what, that gets old after a while. Sometimes you just need some KFC or Taco Bell or whatever. Make it easier on you. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna eat out fast food for three days. So again here, to get your total cost, you're gonna take your cost per day and multiply it by the number of days. So to help you guys out, I'm going to put that multiplication sign. So put that multiplication sign in front of number of days. And then just go right into your calculators and think about that. 15 times 4 and so on and so forth with the information you wrote down. All right, so I wrote down there how much each, 15 times four was 100, was, I'm sorry, it was $60, so that saved me a lot of money. 35 times three equals $105, so that was a little bit more. And now I need to add these two together to get my total costs. Put that addition sign because we need to add these two now because we're gonna get our total down here. Oh man, this is a pretty good budget. Saves me cooking and doing those picnic styles. So I got a total of $165 here with my food. All right, so now that we've calculated everything that we're gonna spend money on for our um, family vacation, now we're gonna put together our entire budget. And this is really what, and you can rip this last page off here to make it easy on you. But this is really what a budget is going to look like when you plan for things like a vacation or getting your own place or um, saving up money for something. This is what it looks like um, to do that. So we had our travel, our lodging, our activities, the rental car, and the food. So what you're going to do is you're going to, again, put that cost per day, how many days you did that, and that total cost. So I'm just going to put the total cost on mine. Yeah, travel is going to be where you're going and how you're getting there. The lodging is going to be the tent rental hotel. So you're just taking that total cost out of each of those sections. Sorry if I'm moving on a little quicker. My computer just said I'm running out of recording storage. So I don't want to record all of this and it not be able to go through. So pot on. But I think you guys are get a hold of it. It's pretty straightforward. Hopefully it's a fun activity where you get to, um, you know, also see how much things can cost, um, especially things like big things like vacations and living independently. So once you have all those total costs here, make sure you fill in this. I'm only doing it because of time. Make sure you can put in that cost per day and how many days. Get that total cost and you need to add. Got that addition sign there. So add up all of these to get your total cost of your vacation. You guys wanna see what mine is? Maybe, maybe yours is gonna be cheaper because you guys spent your money a little better than I did. I don't know. But I have a total that this vacation to the mountains, going on a road, going to the amusement parks, renting an SUV, flying there, it's all going to cost me $1,905. It's almost $2,000. 
So it's pretty expensive. So I definitely would have to save for that. Think about how much money I would need to save for that each week um, from my paychecks and, and make sure I have that for my budget. But that's how you would budget that. So you would be able to take that vacation and not worry about if you have enough money. So the last thing you guys are going to do is you're going to tell me about your vacation. Tell us whether where you were going, what you were going to do while you were there. So you just really can write, well, you know, I chose to go to uh, the beach and I chose to drive there. Um, I chose to stay in um, a hotel or a condo and I'm going to go do water sports. Um, I didn't rent a car so that and then you talk about the food and different stuff. So just tell us about your vacation and just a fun little writing writing exercise. And we'll share those out tomorrow for our Talk Tuesdays just to see how well you guys did on your Monday activity of budgeting. So um, I'll meet you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Excuse me. Um, at 11 a.m. for our Talk Tuesdays. Uh, I know we're a little behind on those, but that's okay. We'll catch up. We have plenty of time. So um, I hope you all have a wonderful day, night, uh, whenever you're watching this. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will love to help you uh, with this activity. Otherwise, enjoy this beautiful day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.